What's up guys, we got my lovely assistant, Mr. Adam Wilson here. So we're gonna talk about the half guard. So if you're in a situation sometimes where you get down here and you get this nice low position where you're getting ready to sweep the person and the person starts to run the, those darses and those guillotines, it happens, let's talk about it. So before I get into the actual specific tips with the wrist hand fighting, the first thing you have to do is you have to prioritize what's going on. So if we're in a situation where I'm sweep, sweeping, let's say that I've got all the grips locked up, like maybe I'm going for that old school toe tuck, and I've got my grips and I'm getting ready to sweep them, and they begin to attack my neck. If it's a credible threat, priority goes to the choke first. It has to, because if you don't defend the choke, you get choked out, right? And then you don't get to sweep. So everything has to come back to defend number one. And this is something that I do, I noticed that I, I do this from years of playing half guard, where I've rolled with guys that get really good Darces, like my buddy Chad. Um, I used to have a buddy of mine named Brent that used to train with me all the time. He has a freaking killer guillotine. Um, and again, it's one of those things where from rolling with those guys, you intuitively learn how to do this. And I got much better because of it because I got choked out so many darn times. So you have to prioritize everything on the choke first and then you go back to the sweep afterwards. So like if I'm in here playing around, going for a sweep, and Adam starts to run in with a Darce, my arms are going to begin to fight this, and I'll show you what the hand fighting looks like because it's a little specific. And if you haven't done it, well, it, it looks simple, but there's some details to it. I'll hand fight first. After he starts to let go, I go back to my sweep. It's the same thing with the guillotine. If he starts to go for the guillotine, I'm here defending the guillotine in the hands. Then I go back to my sweep afterwards. So let me show you what this looks like. So number one, let's talk about the Dars. The Dars is a, is a killer from half guard. You want to make your shoulders big, okay? Like, so one of my one of my students who's a super super tough blue belt, uh, blue belt world champ in nogi, he's got a good dars, right? And he can use it against high level guys. He was saying the other day, he's like, "Chew, your shoulders are so big," and my shoulders really aren't that big. But what it is is, whenever they go for a dars, I make my shoulders bigger by extending my shoulders out a little bit and even pushing my arm out because you got to think he's got to get that arm to travel from here to here. So by pushing out, I'm making my shoulders essentially or the space that he has to get into bigger. So what that looks like is, let's say if I've got in here, going in here in this half guard here, we get this position, if he starts to run that darts through, immediately, as soon as I feel anything touch the back of this tricep, like right coming right here, I know exactly what they're going for. They're going for a dart setup, so it's no question to me. So there's that's sort of a physical cue that I look for. So what I'll do is I'll begin to flare my elbow out, and if I can, I'll grab this wrist because I can use this for sweeps like a, a regrip here or anything like that. But if nothing else, by even just doing this, where my elbow's out, try to shoot that darts through, super difficult, right? Again, it's a timing thing. If I do this late, it's gonna be a problem. But as soon as you feel something happening here, elbow goes out like this. It creates a lot of space. It's gonna be super hard to get the darts, okay? That's a simple idea that works big time, super simple. It's a timing thing, so you've gotta be like ready for it. So. If you have someone in your gym that goes for Darces on you, just be ready for it. And as soon as they do that, pull that elbow out and you can either regrip and sweep or you can at least just keep it out of there. And if you do get the regrip, push their hand down by your stomach to get it away from your neck. Now, the next one on the guillotine, which is another common one that you can run into with the, uh, the half guard, and it's problematic because if we get into a situation where they do get a guillotine bite on my neck and I sweep, it really doesn't put me in a good position here, okay? So guillotines, in most cases, at least for me, especially in that position, it's gonna be all about hand fighting. So instead of just sitting there and allowing the person to come around my neck, as soon as I feel that hand getting around my neck, both of my hands are gonna come up to fight. I could sometimes keep one on like a grip that I'm fighting, but in most cases, I'll bring both hands to fight. Now, the hand that you grip, it can be important sometimes, but for me, if you can just get one of them and get it away from your neck, they can't join their hands together to get the finish. So let's say that we're going here. Let's turn this direction. So we're like this. He starts to go for a guillotine. As soon as this happens, he, like where he's going here, he'll go over top with the other hand or whatever. I'm gonna start to bring my hands back here in front of my face. Now, just like the Dars, by pushing my elbow out, I make a lot of space and I make it harder to get to the neck. Now, in some cases, if he tries to go for the guillotine, I can re-grip just like we did earlier with the Dars. Okay, if nothing else, by pushing my elbow out, going around my neck, it can be really hard and I can peel this grip off my, my neck here and I can just hold on to it. Eventually he's gonna have to readjust, okay? 
So again, now we're combining, basically you're pushing out like this just to make sure it's harder to get back there and then fighting the grip off the neck. And a lot of times you can get two on one, hang on to it. And then once in both situations, let's say once they let go of the chokes and they go for something else, that's when we can go for the sweep. So it's a really simple idea, but I've gotten asked these questions multiple times on the channel. Um, and I, I've seen this happen a lot with my students and I watch tournaments and stuff like that. I see a lot of half guard players at the lower division struggle with this where you're going for a sweep and someone's shooting chokes on you. Uh, usually darts and guillotines are the common ones. If that happens, one, think about making your chest and your shoulders big by pushing your elbows out and making the space that they have to go to connect their grips together bigger. And then also if you're, especially guillotines, double up on a grip on the wrist, right? If you can get two hands on a wrist or the hand, it's huge, it's, it's big time. Because again, he's gonna have to join his hands and if he can't do that, he can't finish the choke. And so that's the idea. So hopefully that's helpful to you guys. Hopefully that's helpful to you if you're a half guard player out there that needs some tips to not get choked. I'm finished. Adam? Adam.